here on Facebook, press share. You can even copy the link, send it out to friends, send it out to family, or even start a watch party yeah. where you're able to even like have church together best. right on your awesome. Facebook page. It's the best. It really is the best way to share the broadcast and to make this an online interactive experience for yourself. Yeah. This is so much more than just a stream. This this broadcast, you know, it, it's it's church happening wherever you're at. Mm -hmm. So maybe you're in your home, mom, dad, grab the kids, get everybody together, show them how to worship, begin to engage in the word, engage in the worship together. We're believing that the presence of God is going to meet you wherever you're at. If you're so watching true. alone, put your headphones in, focus and lean in and begin to engage with the word of God. Really, your faith is what takes this broadcast and turns it into church yeah. from wherever you're watching from. And so we want to encourage you to engage your faith today as we join in for church. But we're going to get ready to worship here in a moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's do. Let's go into worship. Let's jump into worship. <laughs> Hey, Awakening Church, we're so glad to have you guys joining the stream all over the world. Awakening is going global. So whether you're watching from here in Rhode Island or Puerto Rico or the Philippines, we are glad that you are joining with us today because we are the Church of Jesus Christ. We're going to continue to worship te together. Today, a brand new word is going to be preached. I believe that's going to speak directly to your spirit. I'm grateful that no matter what is going on around us, that we have Jesus and His Spirit within us. So engage that spirit. I'd encourage you, we turn the lights down, set an atmosphere, don't be doing something else. But right now, let's take a few moments. Let's lean in to all that God wants for us to do. I'd encourage you, sing along. When, when it's time to pray, will you engage your faith and begin to pray? And when it's time for the Word of God, open your Bible, get a notebook, take some notes, and let God speak directly to you. I'm believing that today your faith is going to be uplifted, that your spirit is going to be encouraged, and that together we are going, as the church, we're going to encounter Jesus Christ today. Are you ready, Awakening? Come on, let's go. Let's worship.
church, I've been reading for weeks all of your praise reports that are pouring in, and they're so encouraging. It reminds you that no matter what's happening in life, God is still blessing His people. Someone wrote the other day, thanking God for their hip replacement. Someone else said, God, thank you for the property I just closed on. But the one that really spoke to me was someone wrote, God, thank you for never leaving me, even when I wasn't getting it right. And there's so many people out there today who are saying, God, are you with me? I have a prayer request. Are you hearing me? And I want to tell you, God has never left you. And right where you are, he wants to answer your prayer. He wants to heal your situation. He wants to bless you. And I want to pray in agreement with you and the rest of the Awakening community that God speaks into your life and meets you right where you are. Would you pray with me? Whatever it is you're dealing with, bring it to mind, bring it to heart right now, and let's come in agreement that we serve a God who hears us and moves on our behalf. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for all the praise reports, but I pray, God, that you'd right now in this moment reach into the lives of all those with prayer requests, that you'd bless them, Lord that you'd answer that prayer, that you'd fix that situation, that you would show yourself strong and true as you always do. That soon enough, their prayer request, they'd say, thank you, God, for never leaving me. We pray you have your way in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. There is sound I love to hear it's the sound of a Savior's robe as he walks into the room where people pray when we hear worship he hears faith. There is a sound I love to hear the sound of a Savior's robe as he walks into the room where people pray when we hear worship he is faith. Jesus says, the sound of his people 
Church, we're going to take a moment. We're going to receive the tithes and the offerings. There's this section of scripture that stuck out to me, and I want to read it. and It'll be uh, right there on your screen so we can read it together. But it's in 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Paul gives this testimony of a Macedonian church. And, and read what he says. He says, now I want you to know, dear brothers and sisters, what God in his kindness has done through the churches in Macedonia. Because see, that's how God works, through churches. They are being tested by many trials. And he says this, and they are very poor, but they are also filled with abundant joy, which has overflowed in rich generosity. For I can testify that they gave not only what they could afford, but far more. And they did it out of their own free will. They begged us again and again for the privilege of sharing in the gift for the believers in Jerusalem. They even did more than we had hoped. For their first action was to give themselves to the Lord and to us, just as God wanted them to do. So he goes on to says, so we've urged Titus, who encouraged your giving in the first place, to return to you now and encourage you to finish the ministry of giving. Since you have excelled in so many ways, in your faith, in gifted speakers, your knowledge, your enthusiasm, and your love for us, I, I want you also to excel in this gracious act of giving. You know, we are a church that excels in many different things. We've got incredible worship, great speakers, and, and creativity, awesome crews. We serve the community. We excel in many different things. But one of the things that I'm so grateful that we excel in is our gracious act of giving. As Paul said, out of our own free will. And certainly we are in a time of trials and a time of trouble right now. And, and maybe we even do have less than we did before. But I'm thankful that the church is still excelling in its giving. And I can promise you this, as a church, we are always going to be a generous church. Not only are the people generous, but our church is generous. We are doing everything we can to advance the gospel of Jesus Christ, to preach the word of God, to heal and help those in our communities, and honestly, even those outside the bounds of our communities, because we don't believe we're just called to Christians, we are called to the world, to those that don't yet believe in Jesus, but are still in need, we are going to be generous to them. And so thank you, church, for your generosity, for your act of giving. I want to encourage you, will you continue to be faithful in that? I pray you got that abundant joy. I pray you've got excitement in the Word of God, but I pray that you are also faithful in your generosity. There's two different ways to give. You can give via app, or you can give uh, online. You can set up reoccurring giving, which I would encourage that way. You can manage it, change it from week to week. But however you give, I'm thankful that you are part of a generous community and that God is giving through you to many, many people, some that you might not ever see, but you are affecting. I want to pray over your house. I want to pray over your home, your finances. I pray that God gives you great jobs. I pray that you're a hard worker. I pray that God has given you wisdom and unbelievable opportunities and that through your generosity, he gets the glory. So right where you're at, just bow your head. Let's pray together. God, I thank you so much for your people, your church. God, I thank you that they excel and exceed in this area of generosity, God. I pray we give not out of compulsion, but of our own free will, that you get the glory. And God, I do pray that this church continues to advance the kingdom of Jesus Christ, advances the gospel. And God, we pray that we have great impact and you get all the credit. In Jesus' mighty name, come on, all God's people said, amen. Amen. Hey, God bless you, Awakening Church. So come and consume God, all oh, we are. We give you permission, our hearts are yours. We want you. We want you. So come and consume God, all oh, we are. We give you permission, our hearts are yours. We want you. For we want you. Our hearts are yours, we want you, but we want you, yes, we want you, Lord. Oh, we are, we give you permission.
washing our hearts are yours we want you Let's pray together. Holy Spirit, we thank you that your presence is right here in our midst. From where everyone is watching, whether in their home or their car, in their apartment, outside, inside, Holy Spirit, we're thankful that you are right there. And Holy Spirit, you're going to speak right to us, our family, our situation. You're going to speak right to our church. And we are so grateful for it. So Lord, we give you these next few moments. Will you speak to us and challenge us? and convict us, and encourage us. Love us, Lord. And may we leave this sermon and this service different in Jesus' name. Come on, all God's people said, amen and amen. Well, it's good to be joining you all today. My name is Jordan. I'm the pastor here at Awakening Church. And um, I'm so grateful for everyone that is joining us all over the world, all over New England, Rhode Island, I am meeting so many different people, really all over the place, that are saying that they have come back to God, or they've been watching the streams, and they've, uh, they, they've been without a church, but someone sent them this link, and now they're joining us, and they're part of our church from all over the place. Even on Sundays, we have been able to gather here in our field, and I'm meeting so many different people that started watching through the whole pandemic uh, and have rededicated themselves to God, have been coming to church in the field, joining us online. I just think it's amazing that the reach is growing, that salvations are happening, that God is still on the throne. He's still in charge, and I want you to know he's speaking directly to you, so it's not by accident that you are watching today. And I want to thank all those that have been a part of this church for so many years, being faithful. We love you guys. We're grateful for you guys. And we look forward to the day when we can all gather together in one place and lift up the name of the Lord, lift up the name of Jesus Christ. If you would take a moment, click share, and uh, let someone know uh, that church is going on. Invite them, text them the link, text them this sermon, and I believe it is going to help them. Hey, I got a great um, little story I want to share with you. Uh, our church has been praying for the past month, as you have, as many people, many churches around the nation, around the world have been praying. As we're having this civil unrest, this upheaval, this difficult times, the church is trying to figure out what can we do and what does God want us to do. So our church, first and foremost, went to prayer. That's where we believe the greatest things happen. And through prayer, we have seen incredible things begin to take place, doors opening, God making a way where really there would be no way without him. I don't have time to tell you the full story, but let me just say this. Uh, this past week, Myself and members of our church, leaders, some of our staff were able to meet with the governor of Rhode Island. And it's been incredible that uh, she's been kind of leading through this whole COVID thing. And, and God opened the door for us to sit down with Governor Raimondo and talk about racial justice and education. How awesome that the church had the opportunity to speak about these issues from a place of strength, because we know that it's Jesus that will come, and Jesus brings justice, Jesus brings identity, Jesus brings change, and Jesus can bring healing. It's just amazing uh, that God opened that door. We know that our salvation is not from the state. Our salvation is Jesus. But I pray that the state, that the government, that people will be able to experience just a little bit of Jesus as the church stands up and represents him well. Many of your voices were heard in that meeting, and I pray that we represented you well in that meeting. I know that Jesus was represented. So we thank God. I'd ask you, will you pray with me that that meeting and the seeds that were sown, they go deep and they 
bring a, a huge harvest in days to come. We're praying for open doors in the schools that we might be able to serve our community. Amen, church? Amazing what God is doing. No person could have ever put this together. It was totally and completely God, and I believe it is just the beginning. Are you ready for the word of God? I want to speak to you on part three of how now shall we live. We're going to begin in, in the verse that we have been reading the past few weeks, Acts uh, chapter two. We're literally going word by word, verse by verse through uh, these verses. God's put it on my heart. Actually, the last five or six weeks we have been here and we're going to read just a little bit more. In the book of Acts, the Holy Spirit fell down. The Holy Spirit came on the church and the Holy Spirit began to craft a brand new and unique community unlike like the world has ever seen before or will ever see. I'm talking about the spirit birth, spirit made, spirit led church. And when the Holy Spirit came down on the church, this is what happened. It produced devoted disciples. It says they devoted themselves to the apostles teaching, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. These are the characteristics of a spirit led church. And then look at this verse. It says in awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. We want to see wonders and signs done again through faith-filled Christians. And now here's the key verse today. And all who believed were together. I need you to say together out loud, right where you're at. Say together. I know we're distant, but we're together. Go ahead, type together. Go ahead, tag someone that you're watching this from a distance, but you're doing it together. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And it goes on and it says, and they were selling their possessions and their belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, they were attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, which is true. And they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God, having favor with all the people. This week, we've seen incredible favor that is coming from God. And we want to pray that we continue to see favor as a church so that we can stand up for those that need a voice, need representation, need the people of Jesus to serve them. And here's the, the final verse. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. Come on, let's pray. God, right now, we give you these next few moments. Speak, not just to me, speak through me to every single person under the sound of my voice. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you have so much more for us to do. Amen. 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 How are you feeling? Feeling okay? I know it's been a strange few months. You know, I know many people that are watching this stream right now are discouraged and are trying to figure out where they are in life, are filled with negativity and, and maybe even fear. But I want you to know that God is for you, that God loves you. And today my goal is just to be a voice of encouragement to you. Church, God is not done using us. Even in the chaos, I'm believing God is still captaining this ship and that God is going to bring us where he needs to bring us your family, your children, your futures, they are in his hands. And God has never dropped someone. He's never dropped their future. And he's not going to begin with you, not going to begin with us. Jesus made this promise, I will build my church and the gates of hell will fall as they advance. That means that the church is unstoppable, not because of what we do or our perfection, certainly not, but because of the fact that Jesus says, this is my thing. And Jesus is the eternal, unstoppable, living force. So I just want to encourage you today. God is for you. He has not forgotten you. And the enemy, and you do have an enemy, he does have his plan, but God has a greater plan. He does have his schemes, but God has a greater plan that he is putting into effect. We're not going to be ignorant of the enemy's schemes. In fact, I'm going to call him out. I'm going to tell you what I'm seeing as a leader of this church. We're not going to be ignorant, but we are not going to put fear or faith in the enemy's schemes. We are going to come to Jesus and say, Lord, will you come and will you work a greater things in our church and in our lives? You know, right now, it seems that the enemy that we have, Satan, the devil, our enemy, the enemy of the church, the enemy of believers, the enemy of Christians, the enemy of God and the enemy of the world, Satan is trying to sow the vision and distraction. The vision and distraction. He's trying to sow it in the nation. 
He's trying to sow it in our states. He's trying to sow it in the church. The church that's called to be united, Satan's trying to come in and divide, be divisive, bring division. Because without a vision, people, they perish. They cast off restraint. They lose focus. So he's trying to bring division so that the vision dies out. The goal of the enemy is to bring division into your marriages, into your families, your extended families. I'm sure for many of you, it's gotten a little weird over the course of the last few months. Things have been said that you feel like can't be unsaid. Maybe there's been hurts. Maybe there's been challenges. Come on, marriages, being stuck in the same apartment, the same house for three months, we were not designed for this. We said for better or worse, this is not what we were thinking of. And I even wonder about the psychological effects of what we're going through right now, where it seems like we even feel a little guilty if we're happy or, 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 or if we're filled with joy or if we take a day off or if things are going well. Maybe we feel like we should be under this cloud. We should be under this aura. We should be under this negativity. And, and, and we have voices coming in from all different directions. Voices in our own minds, voices in our own homes, voices on our own phones. We have so many different opinions, so many different distractions, so many different divisions, so much anger, so much negativity, so much fearfulness and anxiety, and we're trying to figure out the line. What's fearful, what's wisdom? We're not even quite sure. And it feels like, aren't we over this yet? Shouldn't we have been moved on? Why am I still preaching about this? And yet here we are as a church, as people, as Christians, Jesus followers, as Americans, trying to figure out what are we going to do next? Where are we headed? What kind of life are we going to live? We're asking the same question that the prophet Ezekiel asked hundreds of years ago. How now shall we live? Because what was is over. But what about now? What about into the future? What about our calling? What about our purpose? What about our meaning? What about where we're headed? Because we can't live in pause forever. When can we get our faith back up? When can we begin to smile again? When can we begin to love again? When will the atmosphere of fear and negativity, when will it break? Will it break this summer? In the next few months? November? When will this break so that we can get back to living life, to loving, to being families, to being churches? I want, to, I want you to know you're not the only person feeling this way. And if you're not feeling this way, you are lucky. You're not the only person feeling this way. And many of us are trying to figure out where do we turn to? Where do we go? What direction? What speed? What's the next few moves that we have to make? And and are they the right ones? And I think the primary question we're wondering is whose voice do we listen to? So many voices, so many opinions, thoughts, beliefs, ideologies, doctrines, teachings. Whose voice do we listen to? I'm here to tell you, we need to listen now more than ever before in our lives. We must listen to the voice in the leading of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. That's my thesis today. That's my sum total point. I wish it could have more alliteration, more catchy. I wish it could blow your mind. But this is what I want to talk to you about today. That you and I, us as a church, we must be led by the Holy Spirit. Not podcast pastors, not your mother-in-law's emotional angry texts, not some anchor on the news or someone in your feed not your own fickle feelings. We must be led by the Holy Spirit. We must make that choice, that decision, the conscious effort. Jesus, Holy Spirit, will you lead us? Will you show us how we should live? Where we should go? What direction should we take? Because let me tell you, if we have to do this on our own, we are in trouble. But if we can follow the Holy Spirit, I'm telling you, like he did today, uh, this week for our church, he will do this week for you. He will open doors that you could not open. 
He will shut doors that you didn't know were supposed to be shut. He will lead you and heal you and challenge you. And if you'll allow him, he'll even convict you of wrong mindsets because we don't even understand what atmosphere we are in, what world we are a part of right now. But the Holy Spirit knows the beginning from the end. He knows exactly where you are, where we are. And if we will allow him, he will lead us. But we have to allow him. We have to relinquish control. We have to maybe not be in charge. We have to maybe not know it all. We have to maybe not be right or self-righteous. We have to say, God, we don't know, but we know you know. Therefore, God, we're going to let you lead us. Holy Spirit, lead us. Are you with me? Is this making sense so far? Have you found yourself in this place? Are you there? The Holy Spirit will lead us. He will lead us if we allow him. In the first place, the Holy Spirit will lead us, you and I as individuals and us as a corporate church, as he will lead us into unity. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, will lead us into unity. Remember what we're talking about now is we're talking about the dichotomy of are we going to be led in our flesh or in our spirit? What did Paul say in Galatians? He said, are you so foolish that having begun in the spirit, are you now going to be better, complete? Are you going to finish in the flesh? What's he talking about? He's talking about the way you live, what your worldview is. He says, is it going to be flesh or spirit? Is it going to be God or culture? Is it going to be self or savior? Is it going to be eternal or temporary? Is it going to be government or kingdom? What is the worldview that you are going to engage with? Because you are going to live in one of the two. Are you going to live in this culture or are you going to live in the kingdom of God? Are you going to live in flesh or spirit? If you live in spirit and you say, I have made the definitive decision to follow the Holy Spirit, then the Holy Spirit says, all right, let me take over. Let me bring you then into this first step, which is going to be unity. Now, listen, some people might not want to follow you in this place, but you are not to be led by everyone. You're not even to be led by yourself. If you follow the spirit, I'm telling you one of the natural outflows. One of the places he wants to bring you is into a place of unity. Unity, not divorce. Unity, not disenfranchised. Unity, not divided, distracted. Unity. Look at at what it says in in this verse I read in in the book of Acts. It says, "And, and all who believed, I'm talking to Christians today, believers, followers of the way. I can't speak Two and four, those that don't believe in Jesus Christ. I can't speak for other churches or other religions or other people, but I can say all who believed in Jesus, I see that they were together. They had all things in common. What did this come on the heels of but the Holy Spirit? Because when the Holy Spirit comes down, so unity is produced. So togetherness is produced. So commonality is produced. It's not saying that they were all the same. They were all uniform. They all believed the same, acted the same. They all, they all agreed exactly on the same. No, they had a commonality that was greater than their disagreements. I'm talking about the cross of Jesus Christ. The cross that makes all men and women brothers and sisters. The cross from which the blood flows down and washes us. The cross which says doesn't matter your class, doesn't matter your upbringing, doesn't matter where you are coming from, it matters who you are coming to. The cross of Jesus Christ saves mankind, makes all men free, not just in the, uh, in the temporary, but in the eternity. In eternity, it is the cross that brings us together. It's at the foot of the cross where we look across someone else. We said, you need forgiveness. I do too. You're struggling. I am too. Together, let's pray. Let's love Jesus. Let's let's, let's be for each other. And that's the birth of the church, that we come together. We have all things in commonality. Why? Because the Holy Spirit exists to produce this. Hear me, church, a united church is an unstoppable force. A united church is an unstoppable force. We say here at Awakening that unstoppable is our nature. But do you know why it's our nature? It's because it's part of the Holy Spirit's nature. And we are led by the Holy Spirit. We are a Holy Spirit church. Think about Jesus' prayer. uh, In the crucifixion period, he prayed for his disciples and he says, Lord, may they be one as we are one. You know what's interesting about that prayer is Jesus prayed it out loud. Lord, may they be one 
as we are one. He could have prayed that silently, but he prayed it out loud to look around the room. He's looking at everybody. You guys get that? May they be one. You get that? Everybody, you got it? Because he knew we were going to disagree. He knew we were going to get weird. We we're going to get offended or we we're going to get bitter. We we're going to have a, have a, a, um, a, a, a raise of a, a, a conversation with, with loud volume. He, he knew. He knew that there were going to be arguments and he knew there was going to be petty infighting. And so he says out loud, so Lord, may they be one. Thomas, you got that? As we are one. Why? Because God's goal was unity. His goal was togetherness. And so he's praying it, not just because we're going to need that prayer, but so that we could hear that prayer, so that prayer could become a goal and we could say amen, come into agreement with that prayer. God wants you to have unity in your home, not constant cycles of disagreement. He wants there to be togetherness in his church. And yes, even in these states and these nations that we would work towards commonality, especially those who believe I'm talking to the church of Jesus Christ because unity commands a blessing. David says how good it is when brothers, sisters dwell in unity. God loves it. He sees it. He blesses it. He puts his hand on it. Look in Romans 15, verse 5. It says, may the God of endurance and encouragement. I love those two words. They just caught me this week. Endurance and encouragement. I think those are the two things we need right now. You need a good dose of endurance. Just not giving up right now is a win. And encouragement is what your soul needs. And I pray you will be a conduit of encouragement. May the God of endurance. If you're with God, you're going to endure. May the God of encouragement, if his voice is speaking to you, I'm telling you, it will be not be nasty. It will not be mean. It will not be difficult. He is, he is an encouraging God. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accordance with Jesus Christ that together, together, there's that word again, you may with one voice glorify the God, uh, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Look at that phrase, together with one voice. Together, you may, with one voice, we're, we're called to speak as one. We're called to agree in unity. Look at verse seven. So, therefore, welcome one another as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. Don't be closed off to one another. Don't be angry and frustrated with one another. Don't excommunicate someone like you're the Pope, and now they're out. They're out of the crew. They're out of the clique. They are gone. He's saying, come on, be, be welcoming to one another, because remember what you looked like when you got here? Remember what you were dealing with when you got here? Come on. Remember the mistakes you made last month when you got here? Come on. He's saying, be open towards each other. Come on, speak with one voice. How do you speak with one voice if everyone's trying to have their opinion heard? He's saying, come together in prayer come together in unity, speak the word of God, and you're going to speak with one voice. Is this helping you? What am I saying right now? What I'm saying is we see the enemy's scheme. It's not foreign to us. We're not unsure of what's happening right now. It's clear. The watchmen in the churches can see what the enemy's trying to do right now. The enemy's scheme is divide and then conquer. He seeks division first, so it will be easier to conquer because it's always easier to conquer those in isolation. Divide, move apart, create distance, create disagreement, to create diversions. And then once people are isolated in their sin, isolated in their flesh, full of themselves, then the enemy can pick them off one by one because there's strength in unity. If two or more are gathered, there I am in their midst, says God. There's presence in unity. So the enemy will say anything, do anything, become anything, as long as it keeps the very powerful people who love Jesus and love each other as long as it keeps them apart. We know the enemy's schemes. Oh, I got it. Divide and conquer. It's like that Tolkien character from the Lord of the Rings books. And it's a, there's a character called Worm Tongue that attaches himself to the king of Rohan. And, and this character actually speaks for the adversary of this king. He's a, he's a, 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 a representative of a, of a foreign adversary to this king, and, and he speaks lies, and Wormtongue speaks fear, 
and he speaks into the ear of the king anxiety. And all those in the king's court have to be quiet because this, this poisonous tongue has gained elevation in the life of the king. And so everyone else in the court, they're trying to say, king, we got to fight. King, we still have strength. King, there's still people loyal to you. But there's worm tongue saying we can't. We've lost before we even began. We've, we've, we, we couldn't possibly fight this opponent. We've got no strength. Hear me, there's a lot of worm tongues sitting on the shoulders of kings and queen, queens right now that are trying to tell you you're weak, you're nothing. There's a lot of worm tongues that have portals of poison. And many times we allow them. The portal of poison of media, social or mainstream, the portal of poison of people that are always negative. And now their negativity is justified by the overall atmosphere. But the reality is they're a worm tongue. Hear me, who is advising you in your life? What are they speaking into your ear? Are they speaking strength, faith, hope, love, forgiveness, courage? Are they speaking with the voice of angels? Are they speaking with the spirit of God? Are they speaking as representatives of the Almighty? We are Christ's ambassadors called to represent his kingship on earth. Are they speaking as an ambassador of the King of Kings or are they speaking as an ambassador of fear, negativity, division, anger, faithlessness? Hear me, church. You need the Holy Spirit because right now you need the ability to have a discernment of spirits. What are the voices you're listening to? Maybe the voice sounds like your mother. Maybe it sounds like your father. Maybe the voice sounds like yourself. Maybe the voice is those that you are communing with on a daily basis on social media. They don't know you. They don't love you. And yet they speak foremost into your life. I wonder, I wonder right now, are there any worm tongues speaking poison and weakness and division in your life? Division into the church, into the nation, into the world. It wasn't until they kicked Worm Tongue out. It wasn't until they removed him from the king's presence that the king found his old strength. It was there all along. His hand grasped his sword again and he remembered how to use it. I pray you kick out the divisive and demonic voices that you have allowed for far too long in your life. And I'm telling you, you will find strength will return to you faster than you could ever even imagine. You will find that the Holy Spirit will begin to bring life back into your old bones, that his breath will come and a vast army will stand up again. Kick out any spirit that is not the Holy Spirit and create space for the spirit to speak into your life. And the Holy Spirit's going to speak strength. It's going to speak love, forgiveness. Hear me. If you're hearing voices that do not lead to God, health, strength, you do not have to agree you do not have to say amen with those voices. You can know this isn't the voice of God. Therefore, what they are saying is lies and meaningless. You, can, you might say, well, this is what they're saying. Yeah, but we already know they're not the Holy Spirit. So don't give a second more to a spirit, spiritual voice that is not the Holy Spirit. Kick out that voice. Create space for the voice of the Holy Spirit. And here he will bring strength, Unity, love back into your heart, your soul, your marriage, your family, this church, the nation, and even beyond. Hear me. I hear the Spirit of God saying, I will speak through you, but you must open your mouth. We're not called to be afraid, silent, scared. We're not called to just accept whatever is being spoken over us or all, what we're hearing right now. We are the people of Jesus Christ. We are called to be distinct, holy, set apart, different. I hope what you say, how you say it, is different and distinct from those around you because you are representing the kingdom of God, not the kingdom of this world. So my challenge to you, in order to get the voice of God in your life, to go to the word that God speaks my challenge to you would be to come to the word of God if you want to hear the voice of the spirit. If you're not in the word, you will forever be wandering. You will forever be searching in a world filled with emotionalism. If you're not in the word, you will wander into places of petty arguments, strange doctrines, odd teachings, weird fellowships. If you don't, if you don't, 
engage the word, you're going to just engage self-centered, self-righteous living. You'll forever be searching for a truth that you cannot find. But when you come to the truth, it will instantly begin to change your life. The word is the foundation for the storm, so stand strong. The word is the rock against the waves, so cling to the rock. The word is the shelter against the wind, so endure the storm because the storm will pass. Heaven and earth will pass away, but the word of God will remain. So what does the word say? What does the word, the voice, the speaking of the spirit, what does it say to you? What does it say to me? Today, it says love each other as Christ loved us. Do good to one another. Before each other, be slow to speak, quick to listen, slow to become angry. Know that you're brothers and sisters, so consider each other more highly than you consider yourself. Give your lives to each other. I want to read a portion of scripture to you. And if you would, just as I read, let the Holy Spirit speak through these words to you. It's going to, read, it's going to be a few verses, but I'm believing that God has something to say to us. Romans 12, verse 3 says this. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function, so we, though many, are one body in Christ, speaking about the church. And individually, we're members one of another. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them saying, let's act. Let's use what God has given us, especially in times of crisis and need. And here are some of the gifts. If prophecy, then prophesy in proportion to our faith. If service, in our serving. If you have the gift of one who teaches, act that gift out in his teaching. The one who exhorts in his exhortation. The one who contributes in generosity. The one who leads with zeal. The one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be genuine. Let it be real. Let it be honest. Let it be in you. And ab abhor what is evil. Don't become friends with it or allow it. Wink at it. Hold fast to what is good. And love one another with brotherly affection. In fact, outdo one another in showing honor. Let it be a competition in who could be more respectful, more loving, more honoring of each other. Do not be slothful in zeal, but be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For by so doing, you will reap, you will, uh, heap burning coals on his head. Now, here's the final verse. Do not be overcome 
by evil, but, com- but overcome evil with good. See, we do not live in the flesh, act or react by the flesh. We live by the Spirit. We walk in step with the Spirit who says, we don't overcome evil by looking like it and acting like it, living like it, but we overcome evil with the good that is Jesus Christ and all he's done for us. And so church, I'm asking you to let the Holy Spirit lead you, lead you into unity, lead you into love, and lead you into action. Verse 45, it says this in Acts, and here they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. You see personal, radical generosity to others. These were people that took the word of God seriously, the needs of Christians seriously, and there was action on their behalf towards others. One of the first questions ever asked of God was from Cain when he said, Lord, am I my brother's keeper? And it's the question that's been asked by humanity for thousands of generations. Is the need of those around me really my responsibility? And God says, the Holy Spirit says, yeah, be a person of action. Yes, be a person of generosity. Yes, be a person whose love drives you to help, to serve, to be a part of. Yes, you are your brother's keeper. I think the question we have right now is then what are, what are people in need of right now? For some, it is money. For some, they, they just need some financial help. For some in your crews, you can say, well, we can step up. And I've heard many times of that happening. For some, it is money. But honestly, for others, their biggest need right now is encouragement. Their biggest need right now is just love. I mean, I've been calling so many people in our church And at the end of the call, I say, do you need anything? And they say, honestly, just thank you for calling. Keep praying for us. They they say, we got rent, we're good. We got groceries, we're good. But what do we really need? We need you to pray. What do we really need? We really need a call like this. Love, kindness, generous with your time, generous with your charity. If you have the Holy Spirit right now, he's going to lead you to act like this. And let me tell you, church, you are going to stand out. You're going to be distinct, extremely different than those in the world around you. Right now, love is radical. Hope is shocking. Peace is powerful. Happiness is rare. Right now, if you were to be someone like Christ, it would stand out distinctly. It would, it would be almost a shocking event. A couple of weeks ago, I was, I was coming to speak on Sunday and we we're going to the field and, you know, I, I, was, I was nervous. You know, obviously these past few weeks have been filled with all sorts of challenges for everyone and, and I've certainly had my share as well. I was getting ready to preach and I really wanted to help and, you know, kind of all wound up nervous and all of that and, and, uh, and as I was walking in, I saw one of the greeters who just has the, like, a gift of a smile, like the biggest smile in the world. And she was just greeting everyone smiling. And when she greeted my wife and I and said, hi, hi, pastor, good to see you, I began to tear up. I began to cry. I thought, this is new. I would have never, ever thought someone's smile and greeting could touch me so deeply It provokes an emotional response. I I, I didn't know I needed someone saying hi and saying my name, but, but when they did, it was so powerful. And I know it sounds small, but I'm telling you, if you were to do something like this right now, it would stand out in such an incredible way. It would touch someone's heart. Maybe someone that didn't even know that they needed someone to be joy filled and happy. 
my wife and I, we went out to eat the other day and, and uh, the waiter came by and just complimented her eyes and she complimented the waiter's hair. And there was like this beautiful moment. It was like, we all kind of leaned in and it was like, again, everyone's almost gonna tear up. And we're like, are we so hurt? And are we so nervous and anxiety filled that just complimenting a small thing about someone brings a, de a deep love? I, I wonder if the church, I wonder if the church could be extremely effective if we just acted like the church right now. If we didn't get caught up and all the anger and all the ideologies and all the strange doctrines, but we actually said we're, we're called to love those that disagree with us. We're called to be kind. We're called to, 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 to be, to be joy filled. And that's the source of our strength. I wonder if we just acted like the church right now, if it would be revolutionary in the world. Shocking. I wonder how much change God could bring through you if you were extra generous with your grace, extra generous with mercy, extra generous with love. Because let me tell you, the gospel is all about redemption and all about restoration, not cancellation. The gospel leads people to become generous with the grace that God was so generous towards us with. And so I ask you, church, to let the Holy Spirit begin to lead you, not towards yourself, but towards others, to those in need right now. I think the problem is because of what we're in, we can, we can just trying to survive, become completely self-serving. And we can become self-focused. And we can be, become obsessed with our own feelings and, and even, even checking ourselves for symptoms, physical symptoms, and, but emotional symptoms and, and emotional symptoms. And, and we can be so tuned into ourself that we tune out from everyone else. We can be so turned inward that we become closed off to the world. We, we become so inward there is no outward. We, we become distant, but I'm afraid we could become through the physical distance, we could become emotionally isolated. And, and, and that's something people can't recover from. Certainly cultures can't recover from. It is, is a, a coldness that can enter into the hearts of men and women when we serve ourselves. But, but right now we have to remember what Jesus said, that I didn't come to be served. Jesus said, I, I came to serve. Think of it. The king of kings, the only one worthy of service says, that's not why I came. I didn't come for you to be, be all turned towards me. I came that I might turn towards you. And so if we are going to become Jesus followers in Christ like, might we right now in this moment turn towards those that Jesus loves and died for? I think the problem is many of us have become so self-focused that right now we're spiraling out. We don't know what to do. We can't seem to pull out of it. The depression or the anxiety or, or the anger. Seems like we're in an anger incubator right now. And everyone disagrees. And everyone's frustrated. And you're taking your life in your hands just by driving down the road because there's so much road rage. It just seems like you can feel it. You can feel it on people. Every day there's more videos coming out of people losing it. You're like, what's wrong with people? The reality is they're, they're in an incubator of self because they haven't had to turn outward in so long. This is what culture looks like, by the way, when we don't have church for four months, when we lose prayer and worship and teaching, and speaking of Jesus. We turn inward and we have to be our own savior. And God, I'm praying that you save us from ourselves again. Now is the time where we need to refocus on the words of Jesus, the voice of the Holy Spirit, who says things like in Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live. See, after Jesus saved me and restored me and redeemed me and changed me, 
I, I, I've made the decision. I, I've crucified that old flesh, that old self, that old way. I've been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who lives. This is what Paul says, but it's what you've got to say. It, this is the, the lifestyle decision he came into. Done with the flesh, coming towards the spirit, but it's what you need to. Make the same decision. It's no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live, it's in the flesh, but, but I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and who gave himself for me. So I, I guess the solution to self is Savior. The solution to inward is outward. The solution to flesh is spirit. Hear me, church, the Holy Spirit's speaking to you right now. He's speaking to us as a church right now, and he's saying, will you turn outward again? I, I know there's a pandemic, and I know that it's seemingly never ending, but will you turn outward again? Will you serve again, pray again, worship again, love again? Will you come back to me, my voice and my word? Even this week, I, you know, it's, it's, it's been difficult. You know, I, I know it's been difficult for you. Doesn't it feel like a day is like a thousand years every day? It's like three days feels like three months. And there's so many different challenges. And one day this week, my wife and I, we were kind of having a pity party for ourselves and just frustrated that this isn't working and that went wrong and this happened. And we were kind of having a pity party. But in the middle of it, um, the circumstances happened so that we gave a call, FaceTime with someone in our church that is really in need. She's a woman of God, been coming to the church for many, many, many years. And she, um, she has cancer in her blood. And the cancer began to eat away at, in her back. And, and so she broke multiple vertebrae in her back. And on top of that, she had COVID. And so she's in the, in the hospital. And, and we called her to, to pray with her and just talk with her. And, and her spirit was up. She's, she's cracking jokes. She's smiling. She's talking about how much she misses the church and can't wait to come back. And I, it just so challenged us because we were here having our own pity party right before this call. But during the call, we saw a glimpse of faith, a, a glimpse of someone that had belief. And I promised her we're going to pray for her. At least I told you, we're praying for you. We love you. We're so grateful you're a part of our church. I'm asking for everyone in our church, will you lift her up? Lift her up in prayer. God will hear your prayers. We're praying for healing in her blood and in her bones. And by the way, she kicked COVID. So that's, that's one out of three. Let's pray for the next two. We hung up that phone call. and My wife and I were so uplifted. We thought we were calling to minister to her, but she ministered to us. We thought we were calling to lift her faith up, but she lifted our faith up. And it was just such a reminder that when you begin to serve, that's when the Holy Spirit comes into the midst. And we realized we had nothing for pity to pity ourselves for anymore. But we were blessed. We we're thankful. We were different. Why? Because we began to act like Jesus. And our feelings faded. And faith began to rise. And we began to get our lives reprioritized. Serve, church. Come back to the Spirit. Come back to love. Even basic psycho psychology will tell you in helping others, you help yourself. St. Francis of Assisi says, for it is in giving that we receive. Proverbs says, a generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will themselves be refreshed. Hear me, the Holy Spirit's asking you, come back into unity. Come back into love. Come back into action so that the Holy Spirit can flow through you again. Think about what Jesus said about the end times. He says, I will return. And when I return, I will, sh I will separate the sheep from the goats. In other words, spirit from flesh. Those that follow me or themselves. You see it? It's all in scripture. I'm going to separate them. 
And he says, I'm going to speak to my followers and I'm going to say, enter into the kingdom of heaven, the place that I prepared for you before the dawn of creation. Well done, my good and faithful servants. And he says, because when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was thirsty, you gave me a drink. He said, when I was sick, you visited me in the hospital. When I was in prison, you visited me. When I was naked, you clothed me. And, and, the, and the people that, that were identified as sheep that were allowed to go into the kingdom, they said, Jesus, when did we ever see you hungry or thirsty? When did we ever visit you in prison or in the hospital? Jesus said, see, whenever you, you visited my brothers and my sisters on earth, you really visited me. When you helped them, you helped me. I guess what Jesus is saying is the solution the solution is found in serving. That the spirit is called down when you begin to focus out. When we begin to come together as a church, that we might be able to have a mighty impact. Last week, the last few weeks, I asked you to pray and fast. But this week, church, I'm asking you to act. I'm asking you to begin to find where God can use you in small ways and in large ways. I'm asking for you to be the sheep, not the goat. Spirit, not flesh. I'm asking for you to do what Jesus called for us to do, to minister to him on earth. And so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna challenge you right now to let the Holy Spirit speak to you over the next 30 seconds. Because I know you might be saying, well, Jordan, you tell me what to do. What's the church doing? How can I get involved? And certainly you can join the 18 crews. We heart lives. There's so much. But I don't want to, I don't want to just say what the church is doing. I want to ask you, because you is the church. What are you doing? And what's the Holy Spirit asking you to do? Hear me, is there someone you need to forgive? Something you need to let go? Maybe there's something he wants you to launch and start. Maybe there's an area of your life you need to move on from, or maybe that you need to move towards someone. Maybe you need to move towards God. Maybe there's someone that the Holy Spirit, a name that he's been putting on your heart, or someone in your organization that you know you're called to reach out to and help in any way that you can. I don't know, but I know the Holy Spirit knows. And the Holy Spirit speaks. And you as a Christian, you can hear the Spirit, the speaking of the Holy Spirit. You can hear his voice. So for the next 30 seconds, will you just ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, how can I help? How can I help? Let's hear from God. Church, we need the Holy Spirit to lead us. Amen? We need the Holy Spirit. Because we've seen what it looks like when we have men and women, our feelings, thoughts, emotions, media. We've seen what that looks like when it leads us. And it's terrible. We need the Holy Spirit to lead his church again. Boldly, unashamed, that we hear his voice, we know his word, we act forthrightly and instantly, fully, Hear me, church. The Holy Spirit was sent by Jesus, and he was sent to you. And if you are a believer in Jesus, he imparts his spirit to you, that he can lead you and guide you and speak to you. The Holy Spirit speaks just as well on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday as he does on Sunday. And the Holy Spirit speaks just as well to you as he does to me. So will you, this week, ask the Holy Spirit to take the foremost voice in your mind and in your life. May you ask the Holy Spirit to take his place of leadership in your home. And I'm asking him to do so in this church, that we are gonna be a spirit-led people. We're not perfect, certainly not, but we serve a perfect God. We're gonna to continue to do our best, that we might look distinct, different than the world, because we have different leadership than the world. We're led 
by the Holy Spirit. The Bible says at the end, Acts chapter 2, it says the Lord added to their number daily to those who are being saved. I know many of you that are under the sound of my voice, you want to join the family of Jesus right now, and you know you need this salvation I'm talking about. Maybe you've been living under the authority of those, those false gods, demonic things, under the authority of Satan. You need to come under the authority of Jesus Christ right now, that he can cleanse your heart and your mind and your spirit, heal your past, set your future, create your direction. The Holy Spirit can do it. Jesus died on the cross 2,000 years ago so that your guilt and your sin and your shame might not be held against you, but instead you will receive mercy and grace. You will receive the Spirit of, the Spirit of Jesus that you might be able to walk into the future that God prepared for you. So I want to pray for you, and I want to pray for all of the Christians under the sound of my voice, the Jesus followers, the members of Awakening. I want to pray for all of you. We just bow your heads and close your eyes. For those first that need to pray the prayer of repentance, need to ask Jesus for forgiveness, will you just, just pray with me right now? Just say, Dear Jesus, forgive me of my sins and wash me clean. Be my Lord and God, and I will follow you for all of my days. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 If you pray that prayer, we believe that you have entered into the Lamb's book of life, into the family of Jesus Christ. You are part of this incredible thing that God is doing. It's called the church, and we are glad that you're part of it. I'd ask you to go to awakeningchurch.org slash Jesus. Let us know you prayed that prayer. We'll put the link right in the comments and click it. We'll have a pastor reach out to you and pray with you. And for the rest of the church, I wanna pray with you right now. I'm so grateful for you, I love you so much. I'm so thankful that God's continuing to lead us and use us. And I know I preached for a long time. I thought this sermon was gonna be short, but I don't know, something about the empty room makes me think I could preach for hours and hours and hours. But I'm glad you're still watching. I'm glad you're a part of the whole movement. It's incredible what God is doing. It really is. And I believe, I believe even in all the shaking that God wants to bring an awakening. So like Joshua, will you make the declaration as for me and my house, we're gonna serve the Lord. We're not gonna be shaken. We're not gonna be mixed up. We're not gonna be offended out. No, we're gonna stand firm. Even in the midst of all the trouble, we're gonna stand firm on the word and the voice of God. Let's pray, church. God, I thank you so much for the awakeners. I thank you so much for all of those that have made the decision to hear your voice, be led by your spirit. I pray there's divine unity in our church. I pray it is supernatural, distinct, that we look different, speak different, act different than the world. Yes, God, I pray that there's a spirit of love on us, forgiveness. I pray there's a spirit of joy on us and we love each other's company, fellowship and friendship. And Lord, I pray there is a spirit of action on our church. Open doors that we might great, make great impacts in our cities, even in our nation, God. Open divine doors because we promise God to be individuals who will act forthrightly in the word of God. Speak to us, Holy Spirit. And God, I pray even the things that you revealed to all those that prayed in those few seconds and asked the Holy Spirit to speak to them, God, I pray you agitate that word in their heart. God, that they can't rest until they begin to act in what the Holy Spirit has called them to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, we love you guys so much. We're so grateful for you. Truly, truly are. And I want you to know, I believe God's hand is on this church and God's hand is on you. He has not forgotten he has not moved on, and I'm believing truly that the best is still yet to come. I pray that you're hopeful. Pray that you're excited for the future. I pray that you're looking to see what God's going to do, because it's going to be miraculous, and it's going to be distinct, and he's going to get all the glory. Amen? God bless you. Awakening Church, what a timely word that was. We're so grateful you were able to join us in it today. And if today you've decided to follow Jesus or even rededicate your life to yeah, Jesus, yeah. we want to give you a special congratulations. We know that all of heaven is rejoicing because this is the best decision of your life, truly. Absolutely. We want to help you on this journey. Yeah. It's not a one-time decision. Just like Olga said, it's a lifelong journey. And so we actually have a page that we set up. It's awakeningchurch.org Jesus. And right on there, you can put your information, your email, even 
even a prayer request because we want to pray with you. Mm -hmm. We want to know how can we pray with you on this new journey? What, what prayer requests do you have? But on that page, there's a great resource. It's a 30 day devotional called how to follow Jesus. And Pastor Jordan actually wrote it. It's designed to help you begin this journey with following Jesus. Right. And we really right. believe it's going to bless you. It's going to help you as you start from this new decision you made today. And we just want to challenge you as well. We've been challenging viewers mm -hmm. for a couple months now, you know, make the decision, make the commitment to take the 30 days to go through the whole division, the devotional. Yeah. What better time than the, you know, the start of a new month, July, mm -hmm. to make that decision to go through with 30 days. And we really believe it's going to change you. It's going to help you on this journey. There's some other resources on that page. Be sure to check it out. And we just celebrate you. We celebrate the decision. Yeah. And we want to invite you to join in in our community. We have a Facebook page called Awakening Global. And there you're able to even join into the 4,000 people right. that are already there. The and best. like we were saying with the devotional, maybe you can find someone on that page say, hey, who wants to do this devotional Absolutely. with me? Take the next 30 days and really dive into the word of God. So even in this time, take it. You can go Awakening Global on Facebook and just click join. We'll accept you right away. Absolutely. There's so many great things for you to do, Awakening Church. Hey, we love you. We're glad you joined us for this service. We're praying with you and we'll see you at the next service.